Okay, so uh, welcome back from that break. One of my favorite tunes. And uh, we're here on Entertainment Review, Wednesday edition of the show. Today, we're going to have a conversation about uh, our movie industry. We've got one gentleman who's been doing some amazing stuff. We get to understand uh, what he's been doing, his works. And then, of course, we extend the conversation into our industry. We're live on Facebook at Metro TV Ghana and also on Twitter at Metro TV GH. You can join us on there. So our guest, he is a filmmaker. I mean... He's uh, been doing some amazing stuff. When you see his shirt where he's wearing, you know um, the, the title of uh, his latest uh, stuff. And uh, he's Kobna de Graft Johnson. And uh, he's been doing some really, really amazing stuff. So we'll get to know all of that. Good afternoon. Welcome, Mr. Johnson. Thank you. Thank you for having then, me, man. Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 it's like film Oh, no. Nah, I want him there, Francine, there, bro, for English. I mean, bro, for <laughs> English. Oh, yeah, yeah, Francine, English. Is he as bad for, for? Uh, Actually, yeah, Frana, you know, yeah, yeah, Frana, Frana, you know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's good. That's good. I mean, for, for people who are probably watching, you know, for you for the very first time yeah. and um, want to know who really DeGraff Johnson is, Kobna DeGraff Johnson is, if you could, you know, just from yourself so we could hear from you what okay, you've been, okay, okay, you've been okay. doing over the period and who I mean, you are. Yeah. Originally born and raised in Tema, right? And then um after mm. high school I traveled to, you know, continue my university. So okay. um I studied accounting and then um, you know, oh. yeah, yeah, accounting background, shall I be, you know, you know, accounting and then it transitioned into film. So I've been doing that for the past seven years. Okay. Yeah. How was the transition though? Like you, you know, like, did you know? Did you know from the beginning that you wanted to do this, and so um, it was just by chance you got to do the accounting, or you finished with the accounting and like, okay, I think I can do this film thing. So the way it happened was um, accounting was. I feel like it was just because um, I did accounting in Presec. I went to Presec, by the oh. way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's, okay. it's okay. Yeah, that year, that year of life. Four? I was in house three. Okay. You know, the best house, you know. No, Aqua yeah. House is the best house. How you know? <laughs> oh, you. I tell you. Okay. I know. All right. So, um, but after graduating accounting, it was just, it felt very limiting mm. because um, to, 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 to elevate in that, in that job, you need to go get extra degrees. And also working in an accounting field, you have to wait every year for someone to tell you you've been promoted. Ah. So I needed more, you know, more from life. So I started doing photography and then through photography, it just expanded into video. And then as I continued to do video, it just kind of like moved into film. And I realized like it came to me naturally. So at that time I needed something different. So I said, um, and also when I started doing video, someone paid me $50. So I was like, okay, if you pay me 50, it means I could do the job, but it means with the, I don't have a lot of experience. Mm. So after experience, I could earn more. So I started, you know, putting my nine to five money into the craft, and then it evolved into, um, you know, having my own production company. So you quit? I got fired. I what? got fired. Yeah, I got fired. I got fired. You know, because um, when you're doing two things at the same time and something that you love your attention goes to that side. So, so why didn't you resign? Then? Right. <laughs> because, I mean, if you resign, you don't get unemployment. You know what I mean? And, you, and it's, a, it's a game you have to play so okay. that I can win. So to get unemployment, they have to let you go. Because resigning, I'm, not, I'm never going back to that job. So okay. my job now is to be a filmmaker. Oh. So I don't worry about the past too much. It was just a means to an end. Mm. Yeah. And it's been worth it? It's super worth it. Yeah. I'm here now. You know, my accounting job wouldn't bring me here. You know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Definitely. Definitely. So um, when you were in Ghana, um, I don't know if, you know, when growing up, you had, you, you had the, the, the idea of what film was like. What were you watching? What were some of the things that you were watching growing up? And did they have any influence on you, even when you decided to do this uh, professionally? Great question. Um, growing up, um, I used to watch every show, like everybody, Thursday Theater, um, watching um, By the Fireside, mm -hmm. watching, um, you know, all the shitful films that we used to watch on Sundays, you know, mm -hmm. Skipping Church, mm -hmm. you know, so you could go watch it, um, um, Ultimate Paradise, Acapulco Bay. Wow. So, like, we watched all these shows, but I liked the um, way it brought families together. You know, when you mm -hmm. have a show, you could watch it with your family, you know, so I loved that. So... I, I enjoyed watching the experience, but at that time, I didn't know I had a passion in film. I think the passion came after I started to explore more, you know? Okay. So oh. basically, uh, before Helen comes in, basically everything that you have done professionally has been outside the corner. Yes, everything is outside of accounting, and my filmmaking is self-taught. No degree, it's just 
learn by doing. You know, film is very practical, so you just have to keep doing. I mean, you could go to school, which mm. is great, but in the states with the school and film, you end up maybe owing a lot of money, like a hundred thousand. You know, you owe money, okay. so sometimes it's just you have to take a risk and believe in yourself and mm. be able to, you know, say to yourself that you, it can be done, and you just go through the process. Interesting. I mean, before I even come to my question, just to take you back uh, to SOS, you were in yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. And so I have a message here from Mifando. She's a senior okay. broadcaster here. Okay. And she said you are a very nice person and you okay. were one of her favorite people yeah. back in the day. Yeah. And she actually extended her greetings to Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. We, okay. yeah, we go way back. We go uh -huh. way back because we go way back, you know, because, you know, we all grew up as, you know, little children and then just to see everybody doing what they yeah. are doing is amazing. Okay, so some way both of you are in the creative, and that's yes. good to hear. But how are you able to, you know, develop a story, especially with writers? If you are not writing for a particular movie, how are you able to work uh, with writers hand in hand? So um, normally, what happens is I might have a story idea, and then um, I just kind of do a little bit of research to get it some, um, some, you know, some meat. And then after that, I just reach out to the people that I've met over the course of time and say, hey. I pitch to them because every writer has what they love to write because I can't pitch to a writer that, that likes comedy to write horror. They might just not be able to be, you know, attached to it as much. So I just pitch to the people and then once they show interest, then we just continue to develop that story. And I don't see a lot of writers or movie makers, you know, talking about African stories and all that. Do, are you uh, also into telling African story or what forms of story do you tell? I mean, my name is Kabina, so it's like, it's all African, you <laughs> yeah. know? Okay. What I do, you know, what I want to, what I like to do is to be able to tell that local story because in the States, I've learned that um, telling authentic stories is, that's what goes further because we know the story, you know, we know where we come from, we know our culture, we know, we know, you know, like we know ourselves. So when you tell those stories, you can, we are able to express ourselves in our language much better, I believe, than in English. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, the reason why, you know, we sort of picked the name and empowering the, the Ghanaian filmmaker for this conversation is because of that grant that you had. We've had a lot of filmmakers on, on this set. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And for, for, I mean, those who are in Ghana, doing yeah. stuff in Ghana, it's, it looks like it's a very difficult thing to start up, you know, trying to get even cameras, you know, to work with. We've got to go through processes and a, a whole lot of things that really does not help with that. In the States, you've had experiences there. Tell us about it. You know, as a filmmaker, what are some of the opportunities that yeah. you, are, you, you are privy to that helps to make your work easier? So um, there is... So to start that mm. answer, for me personally, I do a lot of research on how companies started. So I go and I look at um, on the big companies and watch how they start because most of the time they started with something so small. Mm. So when I, I looked at Warner Brothers, you know, Warner Brothers that we all know, and there's four brothers, two did, two did the creative and then two did the financial and distribution. And they started with um, a projector and they were just projecting movies in the community. And then after that, they continued to build. So for me, Working nine to five, I saved a lot of my money and then I started buying cameras. Okay. Started because you can't be a full time filmmaker because you, you're not generating revenue. So you, it's, it's impossible to be a full, full time filmmaker. So you have to have a job and then what money you get, you use that to fund that dream. So that's what I did. And it took some time because I've been doing films since 2017. So, and it's 2023 now. So it's almost like six years maybe even more, but I started saving up money, buying cameras. I, I even dipped into my retirement account to buy cameras. Mm. Yeah, because I mean, it's my money, you know, yeah. for retirement, but <laughs> I believe that that investment will pay off. So okay. it's just really, and then also um, just having great relationships with people. Cause sometimes you might have sound equipment, you know, you might be makeup artists, you might yeah. be stylists. And then I just have to make sure that the story that we want to tell, you are invested in it. You know, and then we can all add the resources and be able to, you know, just make that film. Yeah, yeah but for something that requires time and effort, would you say it's a difficult occupation, filmmaking? Um, it's challenging. Okay. You know, I feel like any business is challenging. If you, if you, especially when you get it off the ground, you mm -hmm. know, it's very challenging. But if you believe in it, you have to just keep going through the steps. And mm -hmm. sometimes 
you might not get the result that you want until year five. Yeah. You know? And filmmaking is something of that sort. I call it the mango three, a mango tree. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's... With a mango tree, it takes about five years before you get your first fruit. Yeah. So when you plant it, you have to take care of it. And then in the five years, mm. you'll be able to get your first fruit. And I feel like King of Tema is our first fruit in Ghana. Yeah, okay. okay. And you talking about the challenges in, in the foreign markets, what are some of the challenges that you um, endure or encounter? Because sometimes they say America is a land of opportunities or being outside, you get the opportunity to have things easy. What are some of the challenges you face when you started this whole thing? I mean, the challenges is like pretty much the same in Ghana. You know, competition is a lot of competition because everybody's good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Everybody's good, you know? So there's a lot of competition and there's also a lot of opportunity, mm -hmm. but you have to be able to still stay focused on what you are doing and make sure when you start, mm -hmm. you will finish because you hear people say distribution. Over there with the distribution, it's as challenging as here because if you make a short film, short films don't really make money mm -hmm. you know short yeah. films is really to show showcase your work but if you want to make money with your short film then you have to kind of like have your own um what you might call it like your own um Production showing house. okay your own showing okay. so you sell your tickets to your friends like hey i made a film you might not recover all your money but you might get half of the money back okay. and that's the way you, that's the ways you can use to make money like we have our merchandise yeah we are selling those as well yeah. so and selling those allows us to raise money so we could put it back into our film so it's really an entrepreneur's business and once you have an entrepreneurial mindset you can approach filmmaking from that end and i feel like most filmmakers come in from a let's create the film okay and now more so let's do the business and the film okay, okay. that's that's good we, we've had um, you have an artist from outside the country come yeah. in and say that, you know what, I wanted to do music. I didn't have anything. There was a, a way I could get some grants and bam, I got the grant True. to start my studio, to start my music career. And it happens out there um, for our, our, our country. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it happens here. And, and that is something that you got that has helped you so much. Tell us about about that. Yeah, so the grant is um, it's from CRNY. It's called Creative Rebuild New York Arts. Okay. And their company is really focused on, um, New York is actually a very big art mm. you know, you know, place. So during the pandemic, they wanted to be able to give some access to um, a lot of artists so they mm. could be able to free to create the art. Because when you have a job and you're creating art, it takes time. So the grant just allows us to be able to um, create and partner with local um, TV stations our partnership is with BronxNet. It's in the Bronx. And mm -hmm. then we are going to be creating content with them for, for two years. So we are in our, going into our second year. And then after that, um, you just continue your own journey. So the grant space is good. It definitely um, takes a lot of research to be able to find the grant. And yet you find it and you have to apply. But there, there are grants out there that can help, you know, at least take you to the next step. Mm -hmm. And was it have two on? Um, yeah, the grant was awarded for $1.6 million. And the $1.6 million allowed BronxNet to partner with 10 different artists. So we have mm -hmm. artists that do um, virtual reality. We have artists that do like puppet shows. We have artists that are doing um, various art. And ours mm -hmm. is in filmmaking. Mm -hmm. So then us partnering with that community channel allows us to create content for the community. And also we teach the community. Okay. So if people want to learn about editing, we can teach that. If you want to learn about field production, we can teach it as well. But we don't have that here in Ghana. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if the government is not serious with creative or uh, it's just that we do not have the funds. But how do you think we'll be able to implement such things here in the creative industry? I think it's a lot of group economics, you know? Like, um, there's this saying that says, if you want to go fast, go by yourself. If you want to go farther, go together. So we need, we are in a together space now. It's all about collaboration right now. Mm -hmm. Like, film is very heavy. It's mm -hmm. very hard to do it by yourself. So I feel like together, we can do it. And together is, it's a lot of conversations, right? Because maybe one company cannot give $50,000, but maybe, um, each company can give a thousand dollars, you know, and then we can use that to start the momentum. Because once you start moving, then everybody, you know, joins in. Along. So I think, and as far as you know, a government goes, like filmmaking has always been a private business, you know. So, and if they knew how to do it, it would have been done, right? So mm -hmm. it's yeah, you know, do I you go do I? Mean, you know, okay. that's just what it is. So I feel like um, until 
the private business of film really is able to show a business model that shows profit, mm. then the business people would be interested because okay. the business person is interested for profit, doesn't care about what you're doing. It's like, <laughs> that's your product generate revenue. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But do you make a lot of money from filmmaking? Are you able to gain more profits? For instance, after the grants and everything, are you able to make more money uh, with the money that you invest in a movie? Filmmaking, the money comes later on in life. It doesn't come instantly. Okay. If it's instantly, then it's maybe um, they bought into the film before you completed the film, mm. which they don't really do anymore. I mean, they might do it for the bigger stars and stuff like that. But for us that are coming up, you have to be able to understand that you are investing now and over time you get that money back. Okay. Interesting. So for all, all of you are watching and uh, um, wondering what Cobinet has been working on, we've got this uh, video for you to watch so you get to see some of his works. We're back to continue the conversation. The company has decided to go in a new direction. Well, what direction are we going in? Are we going right or left? <laughs> We're letting you go. I was supposed to go to Ghana this December, send money to family for bills. I Everything will be fine. I mean, what you have to do is file for unemployment because you're going to need that. Huh. My friend, Africans don't file for unemployment. <laughs> our therapist said that we need to start working on our communication. I can't do us right now. I'm sorry. I didn't expect to see you here tonight, Cookie. We have the same mutual friends, so I'm not surprised to see you. The artist's interpretation is about uh, transformation. Just like all of us here. Be inspired to transform to the person we're meant to be. So that was barely made by uh, Kobna de Graft Johnson. What's this about? Yeah. And uh, what really are your films, you know, um, settled on? What, what stories do you try to portray in your... In your okay, own? so barely made, it mm. follows a Ghanaian-American first generation in New York City. She's let go of her job, and then she has to figure out if she wants to follow her passion or go back into the working life while dealing with her Ghanaian parents, you know? Yeah, so... <laughs> That's like a, a real thing that happens yeah, always. So, yeah, so our stories are very, you know, like, relatable, you know, to yeah. the everyday person. But, you know, while in New York, I realized, like, I'm able to watch, like, African-American films. I mean, I watch every film, Nigerian films, but the Ghana films, we, we get the Ghana films from Ghana, but... There are Ghanaians, over 300,000 in New York, right? And it's just like, what are our stories in New York, you know? Okay. So this is where that story came from, because I believe that everywhere there's a Ghanaian, there's a Ghanaian story, and we can still make those stories and bring it back home so we can share the culture from New York in, you know, with Ghana, you know, globally. Okay, that's amazing. You, you, you talked about watching every other movie apart from, you know, Ghanaian. So I, I want to know if you really have been following the, the terrain here in Ghana yeah. from the U.S. Yeah, yeah. I've been, the last film I saw was, um, it's not coming to me, I ain't gonna lie, but, you know, I watched a lot of the old <laughs> films. Like, you know, I told you so, um, okay. Road to Kukrumentimi, um, Love Brood in the Pot, um, um, the old films, okay. because I, I, the I, I old films, saying. they really had certain elements to it that really, you know, then Levels Day, you know. Levels Day inside. Levels <laughs> Day inside, you know. So I watched those a lot. And um, the newer ones, um, I watched um, Keteke. Keteke, right? yeah. I watched Side, Side, Side Chick Gang. Okay. Yeah, so, I so I know you're, you're moving towards Netflix stuff, right? Yeah. Now. yeah. That's where I saw the films, right? Mm -hmm. okay. So, um, yeah, those are the films that I've seen. Yeah. There's Good Coast Lounge. Also oh, I watched that, too. I watched that at the theater because Pascal is my guy. Shout out to Pascal. Okay. Oh, yeah. Great. Often hear um, people say that the African stories are often told by others. Growing up, when we watch television, we see that our stories are being told by others. But in recent times, we've had directors like yourself, filmmakers like yourself, tell that African story to enhance um, what the perception about Africa. When you go into the theaters and these foreigners, what is the reception like? How do they accept it? And moving forward, do they want more of that Okay, good question. Um, I was just at the festival in um, Brooklyn Arts Museum mm -hmm. in, in New York, and 
this filmmaker, her name is Eniwa Boachi. She has a film, um, Moon Over a Brie, and, she, yeah. and there was Brian Angels in that film. It's a short oh, film. we had Brian okay. here last, yeah. last yeah. month. Yeah, he was in the movie, and that whole, they had a section dedicated to Ghana film, and people were intrigued because it's new. Yeah. So when, when it's new, they want to know more. So after the event, they were asking questions, and I think it's great for Ghana because yeah. then people just know Ghana. They want to come to Ghana. They want to see Ghana. So I think... We can only do what we know best, you know. We can't do um, Hollywood films better than Hollywood. We yeah. just can't, you know. So I think people want local, authentic stories. They want to hear that different language because it sounds so different. You know, Mika Fantia or sounded different. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then you put the subtitles, and it's just like I think it's very engaging. Yeah. Uh, elsewhere, we don't see this um, where producers collaborate. Like we we see it there, but in our Ghanaian environment, we are trying to advocates that producers come together to create a global movie even if it's not a global movie just have that sort of collaboration i know elsewhere when you're watching movies let's say marvel you see paramount you see you see like three exactly our Ghanaian movie industry it, it, it collapsed for some time, but then we have actors and actresses, producers that are working 24 7 to make sure that within a year there are movies that we are able to watch we have talked about getting the producers to collaborate. In that terrain, in that part of the world, would, do you think that it is something that will help our industry to start again or rise up again, to be able to be as how it was first? Yeah. And, and on the back of that too, they also compare it to the fact that are, some of the Nigerians are doing that. But then take it from the, the population-wise, mm. how our market is in their markets. Is it a good idea? Should we embark on that adventure? Yes, I think um, I think collaboration right now is the only way because if I have five thousand, you have five thousand, you have five, you have that's twenty k. You know, it it can go much further than my five k. So collaboration right now is the for me is the only way. And right now, as if you're on my Instagram page, you, I'm just asking to come let's work mm-hmm. because shall I let be together yeah. it's literally because I've seen what they do on the stage it's just like like you said different production companies yeah. coming together but also the art of collaboration in itself is a skill set mm-hmm. you know sometimes our interests are not aligned you want to do horror movie yeah. I want to do comedy yeah. mm. so we're not aligned so you have yeah. to find things that are aligned and then we can meet and then make sure the business is right because if I'm bringing 5,000 you bring in 3,000 then it means my percentage in that joint should equal to that 5,000, yours to equal to that 3K, you know? It's just business. Yeah. So collaboration, we say collaboration, but the business behind it has to be, has to make sense. Okay. Yeah, we can still collaborate. I could bring 20,000, you mm-hmm. could bring 2,000. It's still a collaboration. But when the profits come, you know, you get what you put in. True. And when you're able to, you know, be able to understand that, you are able to really move forward and we can continue to do it over and over and over again. Yeah. Okay. But then again, why on the back of what you said earlier, even before here talking about the producers' collaboration and all that, uh, do you think that we are unable to tell our own stories because of fear of probably it not selling out there or people not accepting us? Why are we not telling our own stories as producers? Um, I feel like I can't speak for other producers, yeah. but I just always want to tell stories from Ghana, especially with the local language, fancy, because right. um, that's what I speak. You know, I feel like when the guys make love, they speak fancy, right? So my whole thing is when you speak your local language, that's the best way you can express yourself, you know, because I'm sure the very, very first language you heard as a baby from your parents was your local language, yeah. you know? So um, I think there's power in that, and it connects to us who we are. So. I've always wanted to do local stories, you know, and then it may be, you know, a mix of English here and there, but it would be 80% local and then 20% English because when you watch movies from, like you watch Squid, Squid Games, I think the whole thing was in their language, right? Yeah. And we was able to still enjoy it. Yeah. So we even watch Korean series. We still watch yeah. Korean series. Right, yeah. right, right. <laughs> so it <means> everything. <laughs> yeah. Than so me. it means it <laughs> works. The story yeah, works. Yeah. You know. So I think that's where we have to be, okay. and then it will allow us to be unique and be able to sell our stories globally. Okay. Well, um, if you're just tuning, uh, you're watching an entertainment review. We're talking to Kobna de Graft Johnson, the filmmaker, and uh, we're taking a break. When we come back, we talk about his latest project, and then wrap up on the show. We're we'll back shortly.
Welcome back. We still have coming out the graphs. Johnson was uh, was getting interesting. Of uh, uh, let's wrap up on this. Coming out. What makes a good movie for you? Three things that makes a good movie. Production and then acting. Okay. Yeah. In that order. Not in that order. Okay. But yeah. But because you definitely need a good story. Mm. You definitely need great actors, and the production has to be good. Okay. Okay. Okay, I get it now. Yeah. Let's talk about King of Tema. As right. three Tema people on this table, mm -hmm. one identical lady <laughs> on the Adam side. King of Tema, what's it about? So King of Tema, um, it follows a young man by the name of Pakwisi. You know, his mother's sick and he's looking for money to pay for his bills. Okay. He doesn't have the money and he's short on time. So he reaches out to his friend Charles, who's who lives the lifestyle in the streets to help him get this fast money so he can take care of his mother. Okay. And we just see his life unfold by the choices that he makes to get this money. Okay. Was it difficult putting this together? Um, growing up in Tema, I mean, if you're from Tema, you see things for Tema. So growing up, I always used to see a lot of things, right? But I didn't understand what mm. was happening, right? Okay. So about three years ago, I came to do a short film. And after we did the short film, I realized we can do films in Tema, you know? We can do films just in Tema. Don't have to go to Accra, Kumasi, yeah. nowhere, just Tema films. And I said to myself, what story do I want to watch? Because it's all about what I want to watch that makes sense to the audience. Mm. And I figured um, I, I like crime drama. So I just sat down and it just came to me. And I said, okay, I like this story. Let's get it developed and see how far it can go. And I'm happy about that, that it's just Tema. No, no, no uh, agenda, hey. but... Mm -hmm. I've, I've, I've not understood why Tema as a city and the kind of things that we have, we have done over the years. Our city is still lying, but like nothing when it comes to creative arts these right. days. Our right. musicians have all left. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, the producers, there are some there, but they still come to Accra. Mm -hmm. It's fine. Nothing, there's no... Anyways, you know, I when feel, I talk I about you, like, I feel yeah, 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 you're passionate. Yeah, 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 you're passionate. I'm not moving to Adenta. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, uh, so uh, King, King of Tema, uh, is there, where can we find it? Where can we watch it? So King of Tema, right now, what you just, oh, we didn't see the trailer yet, but um, mm. right now we are working on um, raising money to complete the um, season. It's a, it's, it's a six-episode season. We are still, still in production for episode one in Tema. So um, we're excited to go into production to really bring this thing to life, you know? So um, when it's ready, we will have a premiere in December when everybody's in town for the holidays okay, okay. and then we'll be able to showcase it. it and, you know, the premiere will be in Tema first and then, you of know, course. of course. And then after <laughs> that, we will showcase it, you know, we don't have a location yet, but we showcase it probably somewhere in Accra where it's accessible to, you know, everyone. Everyone, okay. Yeah. I'd often like to ask this question, I think, be a pro being a producer and a director, mm. when you work on a project and you're moving on to the next project, what are some of the lessons you make sure that you don't repeat in the other project that you are doing? A very good question. So um, you just always, you're trying to make the process as efficient as possible. So, you know, because you want to save money every time you shoot. Yeah. So it's just timing, making sure the right cast is there, making sure the locations are there, making sure all the paperwork is done so that you can go on set and have a good time making the film. So just making sure that everything you do is efficient. Yeah. Efficiency is what will save money on your production. Okay. All right. So, uh, you're going to be in, in, in Ghana for, for a while, right? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here for a while. And then, um, yeah, I'm here for a while. You know, my Instagram is, you know, Annie Box Studios. So okay. if you want to get in contact with me, reach out. We are here to collaborate. That's what we are here to do. Because this industry, it's not all for one person's back, man. So it's, it's, it's all of us. And okay. we just have to keep continue to move because it's moving. And um, I feel like, you know, eventually we will see the the new filmmakers that are coming because okay. we have to be able to create the platform yeah. for them to okay. be able to, you know, I mean, yeah, come in. Yeah. All right, come now. Mm. D. Graft Johnson. Yes, Amazing. Yeah, that's there, babe. Yeah, I mean, that's there. You know, all my time got cry. Okay. All right. <laughs>